Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fit Chicks Chat. I'm Amanda Quinn. And I'm Laura Jackson. And guys, today's podcast is so exciting because it is our 200th episode. That's a Laura, lot of talking. I was going to say, we talk way too much, I think. <laughs> 200 episodes is like crazy. Like, that's like a huge milestone. And before we even get started on this episode, I just want to say how grateful we are for all of you for listening for subscribing, for leaving reviews, for comments, and for allowing us to share our thoughts, our opinions, and our message with all of you. So, and also our amazing interviews, like our amazing guests. So thank you guys so much. We are so grateful to be able to have this platform, to be able to speak to people globally and share all this information with you. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, so on today's episode, we are going to take it back and just cover like our top three episodes over the past 200 episodes. So, well actually over the past 100, because the first we, if you listen and you go back into like our vault, you can actually see our top 100. So when we hit our hundredth episode, we actually did our top three there. So we're gonna repeat that, but now we're gonna do it from 100 to 200. Our personal top three episodes, why they are our top episodes, and why you guys need to check them out if you miss them. So. Laura, what is your, what is one of your faves? Because they're all kind of my faves. Like, I love all of our episodes, but like, what are some of the ones that you are, what is your first one that you watch? Actually, one of my ones, which I just re-interviewed her as well, and um, that I've got more podcasts coming up with her, but I had a total connection with Dr. Natalie Beauchamp. And um, she is a chiropractor and a functional medicine practitioner out of Ottawa. And she wrote a book called what the hack and it's all about health hacks but Mm -hmm. when i interviewed her i literally felt like i was like speaking to like one of my health soul sisters so because her whole book is about hacking your health habits making things super super simple and she goes through everything not just from like your fitness and your nutrition but your mindset your energy levels your sleep your like pretty much anything to do with health into these little like digestible bite-sized chunks So I just found like talking to her, it was like, number one, it was such a great interview for me personally, because I learned a lot. And I also felt so, um, I just felt re-inspired about my craft because like sometimes it's so, you know, when you're constantly working in a place where you're delivering information and you're talking about to somebody who's telling you things that you didn't even know yet, it's like you get re-inspired natural health, fitness, nutrition, movement, mindset. That's my passion. And to have somebody else that you're speaking to is so passionate about it as well. It literally like, I left that interview so buzzing. I was excited to interview her again. And I actually started yeah. implementing her stuff. So for me, that was hundred percent one of mine because not only was it super informational, but it was also really motivational. Awesome. And I'm pumped to have her on again. So there's two more episodes coming up guys that you guys can hear from her. Yeah. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't already so that you don't miss them. My, um, one of mine was actually episode 123, which is an interview that I did with Marie Barker. And I feel like it's the same sort of similar reason that you had, which is, I just felt like the very first time I ever interviewed her, which is, um, way back, I felt literally like she was like my best friend. Like, honestly, (laughs) we just, no, I'm serious. Like we got along so well. You would love her too. You have to like talk. But like, we honestly just connected on this level of like, everything just felt so chill and normal and like, but she is so smart and she is the most well-spoken person I've ever spoken to. So Marie, you know that I feel that way about you if you're listening. Um, But we were talking specifically in that episode about, are you an emotional eater? We were talking about emotional eating. Good topic. Yeah. We were talking about emotional eating behaviors, habits, how to identify them, how to understand how to like break those habits, um, how to shift your mindset around that. And then we were also just talking about like the whole idea of like how the industry now labels foods as like good and bad or like clean and dirty and like her whole thought process on that. And so it was such a cool episode because it just, I, as you know, have struggled with emotional eating since I was a kid and it's something that has always been a part of my life, but I feel like I have a deeper understanding of how to deal with it. But talking to her allowed for me to even like dive a bit deeper into like 
what those emotional connectors are and why. And so like that educational aspect of like learning more about emotional eating and understanding like the process behind breaking those habits really hit home for me. So if anyone is listening right now and you're kind of like, I feel like maybe I'm an emotional eater or I know I am, or I'm not even certain what that means. Like check out episode 123 with Marie Barker because it's like, we dive deep in that and I love it. Oh, I, that was a good one. I also, I'm looking for my, hold on, the uh-huh. number of what mine was. I realized I didn't say it for Dr. Hold on just one second. For Dr. Natalie? <laughs> yeah, I'm just checking on my phone here. I think it was, yeah, it was episode 161. But also we'll be linking to all of these from the, the blog post as well. So if any of the episodes that we're talking about, you're like, oh, I didn't jot down the number or maybe we forgot to say it. Don't, don't worry, I'll, I'll be on the blog. So you can link from there as well. Yeah, for sure. But that's one thing I find I always love having on is, is interviews. I absolutely like, I mean, I love our times when we get to chat together, but it's like, I also love the interviews that we get to have, whether it be in fitness or nutrition or wellness or business. Um, Cause there's so many amazing women right now in this field. Mm-hmm. Who have so many different perspectives and bring so much value. Um, yeah. You and I were talking about this the other day about how, you know, we're in the middle of our launch coming up to our next fitness and nutrition expert certification program. And it's such an interesting time right now because there is so much opportunity to be a fitness professional and there's a need now more than ever. Oh my gosh. Yeah. With all the health issues that are going on and how many of them can be prevented by literally Mm -hmm. focusing on movement and how we nourish our bodies and our stress levels. Like stress is a killer when it comes to health and weight and all these things. Yeah. So that's one thing I find that, you know, every time we have these great interviews, I just love it because I just see not only how many cool things people are doing, but also how much opportunity there is for all the people who are in our community as well to, to bring more to the world. So, and also, and also like to add to that, like, it's also the, the opportunity of like, where everyone thinks when you get into health or fitness, you have to just be this one thing. Oh, I have yeah. to be a personal trainer. I have to be this, but it's like, no, nah, like you can be an emotional eating coach. You can be like, you kind of, you should dive into the area. I always tell people, pay attention to the thing that lights you up when it lights you up and it gets you excited. Like go for that. Like if that means yeah. that it is emotional eating and you love talking about that and you understand it so deeply and you're so passionate about helping people get through that, go for that. Or if it's like, working with people. I know one of our students that, um, she just signed up for our fitness and nutrition expert program. She is working, um, on developing programs for families that, um, have eating disorders, like have a children with eating disorders so that she can help support these people. And she deals with that with her daughter. And so she's just, she really wants to get involved in that. I have another lady, same thing. She's, she wants to help families that have children that have cancer because her son has cancer. Mm -hmm. And I get really teary eyed when I think about this, because it's like, it's so, it's such a passion project, but it's like, it doesn't have to be this one thing guys. Like it can be so much more. It's really just like, it opens you up to so much possibility and so much. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's always, I find like everyone has their gateway drug or their gateway certification. You know what I mean? Like there's always Uh that thing that gets you into it, but that's, what's so amazing about the health industry is that you, there's so many different twists and turns and paths you can go on. Like when I first started, I was certified as a personal trainer. You know, yeah. then it went into group fitness. Then it went into um, nutrition coaching. Then I got my, became a full nutritionist. Then, you know, and it keeps on growing. Now I coach in business and all these different things that yeah, it's, but that's, what's so great is that the journey never ends. The one mm-hmm. rule I always tell people though, is don't ever compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 22. Like when you're like, I yeah. want to be like so-and-so. And then you're like, wait a second. She's been in the industry for 20 years and has been studying and growing. Um, yeah. But you know, it's the best industry in the world because you never stop learning. But that yeah. actually leads me to my second p- favorite podcast over the last. Okay, before minutes. you jump into that, there's a little bit of static, I think, because you're maybe moving a bit. So just a heads up. <laughs> mm, I don't know if it's from this. There, it's better now. Okay, keep going. So um, next episode. My next favorite episode was, I believe, it was actually one that you and I did together, and it was talking about the imposter syndrome. Hmm. Um. And again, I don't have the number of it right with me, but I'll post it on the, um, on Check the blog. The blog post. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, it's all about the concept of the imposter syndrome, which was actually first discovered, um, when it came to women and it was corporate women. So they were, did this study and they found that all these women who were in these higher up jobs, they, a high, high percentage, I believe it was like 90% of them 
felt like they suffered from the imposter syndrome, right. which is basically like feeling like you're a fraud. And mm -hmm. I related so much to that. And also I love talking about it. We got so much email, so many emails and so much feedback about that one. People saying, oh my gosh, you were like in my head. That's exactly how I feel. Because yeah. so many of us are going through this life, whether it be as a fitness instructor or whether it be as a life coach or whether it be, you know, as a wife or whatever it is. And you feel like you're not good enough. You feel like you're a fraud. You feel like you don't know enough. You feel like you're like living this fake world. It's like when I used to put on a suit to go to work, yeah. I felt like I was playing dress up. Yeah. It was like, this doesn't feel like authentically me, but it's such an interesting thing because it's almost like though. I, the whole purpose of that podcast too, is to try to like shift the perspective around thinking of that as a negative thing and taking it as almost like owning your alter ego or owning your cloak in a sense. Like, you know, for me, every time I put on this yellow shirt, even if I don't feel that day, like I'm not feeling that positive or I'm not feeling that good about myself. It's like, this is my fit chicks, Laura. So as I put on the shirt, it's like, I go through this like transformation. It's like, I'm <laughs> putting on my cape. Like, or like what we say, like Beyonce, like with her Sasha Fierce. Like, exactly. So she gets the She's like a different human. <laughs> exactly. And I also think that that podcast really, the one of the reasons why it resonated with me was like, not only just from the feedback that we got, but how many people, once you realize that we're all going through the same thing, how not easier it is to get past it, but once you recognize it and you're like, whoa, wait a second, I'm not alone in that. Everyone feels this way. Yeah. Then you start, it starts to take away a lot of like the stigma around it or the way you feel about yourself and realize that we're all on this journey through life, trying to figure it out. Like no one has all the answers, you know, anything, life is fluid. Anything that's set in stone one week can totally blow up the next week or something that didn't seem like it was working one week, totally fall into place the next week. So it's like, you can't focus on those, those moments, but you also have to just know and trust yourself that you're going to be the best in that situation that you can be. So that was one of my favorites. Yeah, no, I always love talking about the imposter syndrome because I do think that it, I think that so many people can relate to it. Like you said, from different perspectives, it doesn't have to just be business or fitness as like a health pro or anything. Because I know, you know, if you go back and listen to that, we talk about our own experiences and how we felt when we first started in the fitness industry and how, you know, we still to this day, like I share that story about when I had to step on stage and, and speak as like, at a speaking conference when I just had Maddie and I was like overweight and I was like, Oh my gosh, I feel like an imposter. So definitely go back and listen to that guys. If you're struggling with that, or, you know, if you feel as though there's moments, these fleeting moments that you feel like or, maybe you're stepping into a different role or you're just curious to know and understand what that feels like. or understand. Yeah. Or, or if you're about to embark or you're thinking about embarking on a new journey in your life, like a yeah. new path, um, you know, like maybe you're looking at getting certified or maybe you're thinking about quitting your job and starting on a, focusing on a whole new area. Yeah. Or, you know, just realize that that comes with the journey, you know, like a lot of it, where, whether it's fear or whether it's feeling like, you know, you're not good enough or whatever, it happens to all of us. And you just have to recognize it's going to happen and do it anyways. And I know that sounds easy. It's easier said <laughs> than done. But that's why we're such huge believers in surrounding yourself with a really great tribe. And I'm biased, but I would say a really great tribe of women. Because, <laughs> because what ends up happening though, is the days that you feel like, you know, that insecurity monster starts talking, they give you the voice of reason and bring you back. So I just think if you're, especially, yeah, especially if you're at a point where you're looking at making changes in your life, go and listen to that podcast. Cause it will, it will give you a whole new perspective on a lot of emotions that are going to come up during the process. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think for me, another podcast that I, over the past hundred of the 200 that I love was um, episode number 188, which was with um, Dr. Maritza Snyder. And it was all about essential oils for hormone balancing. And I loved this interview with her because number one, this again goes back to the imposter syndrome. When I was going to interview her, I was actually like super nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's a doctor, like she's going to talk about hormones and stuff. Like I'm not super familiar with the stuff that she's going to talk about. And I also didn't really understand how essential oils could really help your body. Like I didn't, yeah. I always believed essential oils were kind of like that thing of like, you know, the, like, as my dad calls it, like the hippy dippy stuff that like, oh, it's just like, oh, it's airy fairy. It doesn't really work. And so I didn't really have that deep understanding of it. So going in and talking to someone who was an expert where I didn't feel like, I was educated enough to have that conversation. I was nervous. 
And I had that imposter syndrome where I was like, oh, who am I to be talking about this? But the interview, I loved it because number one, like she's super hilarious. So like if you <laughs> if you haven't listened to it, like listen to it. She's so funny. And she is so good at explaining it. And like she came from a place of like being in the health industry and seeing how people were just sick and not paying attention and getting sicker. And then there was doctors that were trying to tell people to get healthy, but then they were sick and like not taking care of themselves. And she just felt like the whole industry was so backwards that she was like, you know what? No, I got to like go into this. I got to like dive deeper and help people from a different perspective. And so she ended up writing this book, um, the essential oils for hormone balancing and like talks through it. And like in the interview, she even shares like really cool, um, like, Oh my gosh, what are they called? I, I want to say the word potion, but it's not a potion. <laughs> uh, like an elixir? No, like like the mixtures, like how to like create like really cool combinations. That's the word. Oh, I'm thinking <laughs> of potions. I'm thinking of my little bottle I have that looks like a genie bottle. Guys, I'm <laughs> I'm such a nerd. Um, no, so she talks about like these combos that you can make with different oils to like actually help with different scenarios. If you're dealing with stress, or you're dealing with weight loss, or you're dealing with like cravings and all this stuff. And so she actually gives you like some really cool tips. But in it, it was more about just understanding exactly how everything is connected. That mind body connection. Yeah. That like every sense in your body connects to your entire being. And so like understanding that and hearing her talk about it was like. It was so cool for me to be able to learn that. So again, just going into it from this imposter mentality, but then leaving it feeling really aware. And then also I was totally sold on it. Like, I mean, I was like, as soon as the interview ended, I went on Amazon, (laughs) I bought a box of like 24 different essential oils. I bought two different diffusers. I bought spray bottles, roll on things. I have everything. I am like the essential oil. Like They're amazing now. though. They're I have like, I make my own potions at home. No, I'm like, I'm yeah. like all about it. Yeah. No. So it was just, it was so fun for me to have that conversation with her because it was like educational. It got me over my imposter thing. I learned so much. And then I also am now living a better quality life because I have all of this in my life. And I didn't even understand how important it was, how much I needed it in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I love that episode. Yeah. Um, well, for me, my last one is fitness. And it actually is another one that you and I did together. But the yeah. reason why this is one of mine. Because um, you got to talk to me. <laughs> yes. But also because <laughs> I felt like when I learned about this concept, it changed the way that I've been working out lately. Because being a worker outer. So like I started working out. I've been working out now for like, what, over 20 years. And my typical way, like I don't play sports. I don't, I'm not competitive. So my exercise is typically either at a fitness class, you know, outside in nature or at the gym. And we live in Canada. So it's like in the wintertime, it's typically in the gym. And like, I don't know about you guys, but I get super like not uninspired, but I have this weird thing that sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to go to the same freaking place again. Like I hate, you know, we're, we're all creatures of habit, but like I mean, if I have to walk through and smell that gym smell and walk to that door one more time and I'll lose my freaking mind. <laughs> so, and I also felt like I was just like in these workouts where I was like, just Doing dragging, it. dragging through them and, you know, like taking too long of breaks and scrolling through Instagram while I was in between. And I'm like, no, like, so when we did this, um, I went to the Campit Pro conference in the summertime and I heard Dr. Len Kravitz speak and he was talking about peripheral heart action training which was Mm -hmm. then what this podcast was about. Yeah. And I started implementing it into my workouts and it literally has like re-inspired this fire in my workouts, but also has changed the way, like my results in terms of my cardio and my muscle building. So, um, and like you and I were doing them when we were in Nashville. Yeah. So fun and so So hard. Exactly. And I also now, and I'll tell you guys in a second, keep you in suspense for those of you who didn't listen to the podcast, what it is, but make sure you go listen to that podcast. Um, but one of the things I've been doing too is setting a timer. And I was talking to Dr. Natalie about this too, the other day when I was chatting with her and, um, but getting really intentional about things I'm doing in my life, including my workouts. So going in, setting a timer, I only allow myself 35 minutes for my workout, including my warm up, in and out. And literally these workouts, I'm leaving drenched in sweat because I'm pushing so hard during that time, but not to the place of where like, and this is something that's kind of a misconception. Everyone thinks that we have to go so hard in every workout. Um, when it, like you're gonna <laughs> well, and in all reality, when you do too hard, you can't like, 
it's the whole idea of volume over intensity. So like side note, I'm going to side note onto a pod, another podcast I actually listened to. Uh, I was talking about the whole idea of like when we work out, like a lot of, let's use CrossFit, for example, every workout is your PR. You're supposed to get a personal record every single workout. So you're pushing your body to this really, really, really intense place and our yeah. bodies need to recover. So in the long term, if you took, let's say a whole year of workouts, you wouldn't be able to work out as much because you would be constantly in a state of repair. So when you, when you go through pushing yourself, of course, but you're not going to that place of PRs every time you get more volume in. So at the end of the year, you're actually more ahead because you've been able to train more. It's actually a concept that a lot of athletes use like um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and stuff like that. Like when people think that these athletes like MMA fighters, when they're in the ring, that they train like that in their training camps, God, no, they train so light, so, so light, but it's constant. Um, yeah. and that, because their bodies that, that, so that they can down. train every day and yeah. who, who has more benefit, the person who can do, you know, if over time, if I've been able to do 10,000 pushups in my workout, but you've only been able to do 500 because you're constantly repairing, there's a different mentality around it. Right. So it's, it just depends on how you look at workouts, but I found that really fascinating. So my whole thing with peripheral heart, heart reduction training, I kind of, I kind of swapped it up a bit. I made it our own. Um, yeah. So typical peripheral heart action training is actually you do a circuit. So you do about five to six exercises in a circuit and you alternate every single exercise between an upper and a lower body. And the purpose of it is that it actually, with the circulation of the blood going from the upper to the lower, upper to the lower, um, you're actually going to be able to burn more. You're recovering during your alternate workout. It helps with blood pressure. Um, it burns more calories. Like there's been a lot of studies that have been shown how great this is. So, and you can super, and you can superset it because because while you're you know if you do lower body and then all of a sudden you're doing upper body in the next set your lower body's resting so you have time to recover in between exactly you don't have to so, do that you're not just sitting recovering you're actually doing active recovery by just switching the body movement well whereas before like I got into a place where I was doing like a standard bodybuilding split so I would be lifting weights doing let's say um, you know a push workout upper body one day which is chest shoulders triceps. Next day I'd be doing a pull workout, which is back and biceps, and then I'd be doing legs. Yeah. So this way I was only working certain muscle groups this many times a week. And also my heart rate wasn't getting up as much because it was just upper body. Like, I don't know, unless you're, even when I lift heavy, I don't sweat a lot. My, I need to get my heart rate up. Like, I so wish. with this, <laughs> so with this, the way I've been doing it lately is that I pick, and this is what we did in Nashville. I don't yeah. do the five exercises in a row as a circuit. I do it as superset. So it's kind of a modified peripheral heart action. So let's say you're going from like squats to push-ups. So it's going from yeah. like, especially standing squats and then going down to push-ups, which is upper body, but then you're also horizontal. So the blood flow changes um, and it has to work harder. Now, if yeah. you have blood pressure issues, the up and down might not work for you. So of course you always want to see a physician before you start anything, but I would superset those two back and forth for three sets. And I pick three different X, three different supersets three upper body, three lower body. I still like to try to stay in the mindset though of the, um, of the push and pull. So like I'll do the superset one day, which will just be push exercises and lower body, maybe quads. And then the next day I'll do pull upper body exercises and then the lower body being, um, hamstrings and glutes. And I throw some abs. Yeah. But yeah, okay. long winded. Go back <laughs> yeah. But that is my, that is actually like one of mine because once I started implementing that, I just feel really re-inspired about my workouts and I'm, I'm just really enjoying them in a different way again. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to cheat because I have, I know we're only supposed to have one more, but I have three. <laughs> but they're not. Well, okay. So it's episode 192 and 193. And these are two of the three because these were my two episodes with Kaylin from Lady Boss. Mm. And... I love Kaylin and she's so cool and she's so fun. And like, honestly, we had such a great time. So we, 192 was all about her story. And we, she shared like her whole struggles with weight loss were how she lost 65 pounds and hit the stage and became like a world record holder for, um, it's not IDFA. It's the, um, I can't remember the other one, but she, it's one of the ones in the States. I can't. Yeah. Remember. It's in the United States, but so she's actually a world record holder. She was able to like transform her body, lose 65 pounds. And like, she talks about like just different struggles with weight loss. We talk about motivation techniques and 
we talked about like the whole thing of like setting up an actual program versus just doing it on your own. Like we just, we talked about so many different things in that. And then on one day, episode 193 was about her business. And her business is crushing it, guys. Like Lady Boss, she is just crushing it. She's got like world domination on her mind and she is doing amazing things. And she shared like literally some of her tips and tricks about how to build an online business. But one of the most important things she talked about in that and that I love was about focusing on serving. She just was like, that's all I focus on is like how I can help. And she's like, when you focus on that, the money will come. So anyone here that's listening right now, that's like, okay, like I want to get into business or I'm starting my business or I'm struggling in my business or anything. Maybe it's your mindset. Maybe you're focusing on the finances and not focusing on the impact. And so really have a listen to that episode 193 and listen to what she says. Cause like, like I said, she's crushing it. She's doing amazing things. She's worked with millions of women around the world, yeah. helping them become lady bosses and get fit. And like, it's, but it's about the way that she approaches it. It's so different. And so you guys really need to listen to those two episodes. So 182 and 183. Also, the funniest thing is that she was like super pregnant during these episodes when we were filming. And like in between, she was just like, oh my God, like, can I just do a pee break really quick? Cause like my daughter is getting sat on. And then I was like, yeah, of course. And then like, I think she had her baby three days after we finished filming these. Like she literally is such a lady. Boss. Like, she, yeah, no, it was so cute. Like she was just like, I'm just going to do these and make that with you. And she was so gracious and so kind. And I love those episodes. But then my, my final one, my cheater one that I'm going to add in here, um, was actually an episode that you and I did, Laura, just recently, which is where we were sharing our, it was like our throwback Thursday episode. And I don't remember, oh, yeah. it, was it was recently, but where we were just sharing our story of the origin of Fit Chicks and sharing how we transformed our lives going from corporate to building our business and what that real struggle looked like, what we really did and what we really went through because on paper or, you know, on our website or things like that, like it's, it looks like it's like, Oh yeah. Like it's, they've always just been so lucky or it's been so easy or, you know, they've just always been so fortunate that they've had this great business. But guys in that episode, we share like how Laura and I used to work seven days a week on our business. We also worked our five day full-time corporate job for a year. We worked like what, I don't even know how many hours a week. Like I would probably, if I had to guess, I'd probably say we were working about like 80 hours a week combined with our corporate jobs and then building yeah. pit checks. And like, probably more than that. Probably like, a, probably. I didn't have, that I was, was my life work and fit checks. But when you are so passionate about something, it never feels like work. Like I literally would be excited to leave work and to work on fit check stuff. Yeah. The only thing I never liked talking about was our accounting and I still don't. Oh, <laughs> I just don't like numbers. They just irritate me. I'm actually avoiding our account right now. <laughs> but anyways. I hope, Ron, I hope you're not listening. <laughs> Ron, don't, don't get mad at me. Um, <laughs> but I love that episode because I think it's, it's showing that like the true story behind our origins. So guys, if you don't know the story, make sure you listen to that episode and just showing like, you know, that it isn't all so if you are struggling in your business, if you are starting your own business, if you are thinking of a career change, know that there is ups and downs. Know that like we've been doing this for 10 years and we still have moments of ups and downs. We just had one today. We were just having a conversation before recording today that we were talking about like some of the struggles that we're dealing with right now in business. So it's like you always have ups and downs. You're always going to have turns in the road. It's never going to be just like straightforward. But when you know that and you know that like you know, you're not, it's not just you. It's not just your business. It's not just like your struggles or your fears or anything like that. I feel like it really helps people. So that's why we really shared that with you guys to to be able to show you what, what we went through and like what other people go through too. But maybe some people just don't show you, especially on social media. They just show you the highlight reel. And we just tried to show you the realness, the rawness of like, putting up posters in the winter and crying while we're doing it. Laura gluing her hands. I know. I still, that was before (laughs) like Instagram and all this stuff. And I remember my old boss, Lisa saying to me, she's like, you need to be taking actual pictures of you guys doing this because at one point it's going to go into a book. And now I regret not doing it. Cause to have a picture of that, I would die being like my mitt stuck together. I'm trying to, I'm trying to have a fit. Well, I'm trying to throw the paintbrush on the ground in like a fit of rage, but stuck in my hand. <laughs> it's like embarrassing. I'm like, eh, eh, eh. It's like trying to get it off my hand. Like, but it's just the whole thing. I think out of all of the last 200 episodes, one of the things I've really learned is how much more we all really are alike than we are different. 
Um, I think with social media, there's always this thing where we, we look at somebody from the outside glass and we see them and we, we think of them in a certain way and how different they are than we are. But after all the interviews I've done and all the topics we've talked about and the emails we've gotten, it's like, we're all still in the same boat. Some of us are just at different places. Some of us know more about our health or implementing more habits about our health than others. Or some people have a bigger business than each other or whatever it is. But just realize you're not alone in this. And that's what the whole purpose of this podcast is. It's not only give you guys education, but to let you see that like you have a community of women who still to this day, I work in this industry and I struggle with body image at times, you know? Yeah. I still struggle to go to the gym and kick butt in my workouts. I still am trying to build the business that I have envisioned for myself. And I know that still will probably be another 10 year journey. Like I but, still struggle to not eat Doritos for breakfast sometimes. Exactly. Like, I just want to eat them sometimes. We're all <laughs> real and we're all going through this. And the other thing that I really think that I've learned over the last 200 podcasts too, is that it's not about me. <laughs> Yeah. And it's so easy for us to make everything about ourselves and what we do right or what we do wrong and judging ourselves and all of these things. But when you shift your perspective and think about, like you said with Kaylin, the people that you're serving and the people that are listening, like I try to go into every podcast with the intention of like, who is listening to this and what do they need to hear from me today? Because there's things in your life where and I've heard like, you know, you'll listen to a podcast, you hear the same thing over and over and over again. Right. But one day you're ready to hear that message. Like your heart is ready to hear it. Your mind is ready to hear it. You're ready to make a change. And that one day when someone says it, even though you've heard it a hundred times, it clicks inside of you. So yeah. I always try to start with the intention of like, what is, what is someone who's listening to this? What will they need to hear from me today? And it might just be like, wow, I just found peripheral heart action training and now I'm going to, I'm bored of my workouts <laughs> and I'm going to spice it up. Or it could be like, I'm sorry, essential oils and I'm going to make my own potion. Yeah. Or <laughs> it might just be that, okay, you know, I'm still on my journey and I'm getting there, but make it, it's not about me. It's about you guys. And hopefully over the last 200 episodes, we've been bringing you guys with some amazing content that's mm -hmm. helped you make changes or inspired you to make changes. But we are always still at your service and open to whatever you guys want to hear about. So please do never be shy to send us emails to send us DMs, whatever it is about what you want to talk about. If you have specific questions, anything like we see them, we answer them. It's us. It's not like we have our programs manager, Sarah, who filters it, but we're the ones who you're talking to. So please don't be shy because we want to make sure that yeah. we're giving you guys content that actually really connects with you. Definitely. Definitely. Well said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well said. All right, so guys, we're going to wrap this 200th episode of Laura Cyber High Five because we're not in the same room right now. So <laughs> Cyber Five High Fives um, for all of our talking. <laughs> and, uh, and guys, Cyber High Fives to all of you for listening. We appreciate you. We love you, as I said in the very beginning. We are so grateful um, to have each of you in our lives and to be a part of your journey in any way that we are in any capacity. Um, and if you are interested in joining us and becoming more of our tribe and you know really getting involved in the fitchix academy and the fitchix community we have our fitness and nutrition expert program starting in like how many days like 10 i want to say wait no in 12 days. Days. it's in, in 12 days so yeah. oh, oh wait no 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 i'm no wait i'm wrong on my math <laughs> I know, oh like, my gosh. I know. But it's starting very, very soon. It starts March 28th. So yeah. very I'm little like, time. <laughs> I, I don't even know what's wrong with my brain right now. All right. Yes. It's starting very soon. It started on March 28th. If you are interested in joining us, if you're interested in changing your career, changing your life, building the life, um, health and career that you dream of and love, join us, check it out. Fitchicksacademy.com where you can find out more information about the program. And then of course, if you do have any questions about the program, about the certifications, email us info at fitchicks.ca and we will definitely get back to you. And as Laura said, it is, it's actually us directly that we will, will be responding to you. So make sure that you email us and let us know. Yes. And my last thing is just thank you guys so much for allowing us to have this podcast because yeah. truly it's one of my favorite parts of the job too. <laughs> I, know. I, I love it. I love <laughs> it. And you guys have opened my mind and, open our business up to so many other amazing people. And I, last thing I want to say to you is thank you not only to listeners, but thank you to everyone who has been on 
the last hundred episodes who's taken their time to share their message, share their expertise, yes. share their voice. Um, and through it, we've made some amazing friends, amazing contacts, and we've got some amazing new instructors that are starting within the Academy too. So lots yeah. of exciting stuff, um, fitchicksacademy.com and we will see you in episode 201. Bye. Bye.